Hi, my name is John Breen, and today I'm going to be talking about the 10 steps of baking, which are scaling, mixing, fermentation, dividing, rounding, bench rest, shaping, final proof, baking, and lastly, cooling and storage. Scaling your ingredients is the first step in successful bread making, and it is a huge part of your mise en place. Uh, the pre ferments for your dough should be done the day prior to mixing to achieve the, the best product, and it is important to measure out your yeast and your water the day of your mixing. Um, a part of the scaling process is to calculate uh, the water temperature for your dough, and the way to do that is by figuring out the room temperature, the flour temperature, the temperature of your pre-ferments, and the friction factor, which is uh, 28. Um, after you do that, you take your desired dough temp, which should be between 75 and 78, and then multiply that by the number of variables that you have. Then, whatever number you get, you subtract your room temperature, your flour temperature, the temperature of your pre-ferments, and the friction factor from that number, and whatever number you come out with is the temperature for your water. And um, doing that will really um, benefit you in the end um, because it will, you know, better the flavor of your bread, create a more consistent fermentation, and will create a more like, like better predictability for your overall production schedule. Auto leasing is another step that can be um, taken prior to mixing that will help uh, reduce the mixing time of the dough. Uh, the flour and the water and sometimes a pre-ferment are mixed together until combined and that sits for about 20 minutes. And during this resting stage, the gluten development begins and simple sugars um, start to form as starch is broken down. Uh, the salt and the yeast are not included in the auto lease because they tighten the gluten rather than relax it. So they are added during the final mixing process. When you are mixing dough, there are usually two stages uh, to the mixing process. The first is the cleanup stage, which usually happens on first speed to incorporate and hydrate all the dry ingredients. And the second stage is where you develop the gluten when the mixture is on second speed. And your dough will become smoother and stronger, and it will begin to pull away from the sides of the bowl. At this point, you want to check to see that the glutens have developed by making a gluten window. Um, there are three mixing methods to use depending on what you want your final product to be. So there is the short mix, which does not develop the gluten very much, so the dough will be very soft. And since the glutens will be underdeveloped, it will require a longer fermentation uh, about three hours and um, will usually need up to two to four folds. The short mix will result in a longer shelf life, uh, a more complex flavor, and a more open crumb with a smaller volume. Um, the intensive mix, um, you mix the dough longer and the um, gluten will uh, develop a lot and that will make the dough really stiff and this will result in a shorter fermentation time about 20 minutes with no folds and because the gluten is already fully developed the final products will have a much uh, tighter crumb with a larger volume with a uh, much more blander flavor and a shorter shelf life. With the improved mix, the mixing time is basically right in between the short and the intensive mix, so the gluten structure is not fully developed, and this will make it so you need to do about one fold for this dough, and the fermentation time is about an hour and a half to about two hours. And the effects on the final product are a decent shelf life, good flavor, um, medium volume and a good crumb color that is open and irregular. Um, uh, for the mixers, uh, there are two types of mixers that are usually used. The planetary, which needs the bread in a non-moving bowl, and the spiral mixer, which uh, both the hook and the bowl rotate at the same time. Um, once the dough is all mixed, um, it is placed into bins and that is where it will start its fermentation process. And during this process, the yeast um, starts to convert the sugars into carbon dioxide, 
alcohol, and organic acids. And that is where most of the bread's flavor will come from. And like I said before, depending on um, the style of mixing that you used, either the short, intensive, or the improved, that will determine the length of your fermentation and how many folds that you will need. And the folding during the fermentation process uh, regulates the temperature of the dough as well as strengthens the gluten and gets rid of some of that excess carbon dioxide that could be inside your dough. Once the primary fermentation stage is complete, it is now time to divide the dough. And it is important to weigh out each portion of dough evenly to maintain a consistent product. And it is also important to keep your cuts of dough usually in the shape of a square uh, to make it easier for you to complete the next step of pre-shaping. Pre-shaping is basically a loose suggestion to the dough of where it is headed, and this stage will um, help make your final shaping so much easier. It is important to, um, immediately after dividing, to degas and work each portion of dough into a somewhat smooth shape. And it is important to be stingy with the flour at this stage, and not to tighten the surface skin too much of your dough till it rips, that's not good. And it, it's just important to be gentle and um, be loose when pre-shaping your dough. After you pre-shape, it is important to uh, let any tightened glutens in your dough caused by handling to relax so that um, they are ready for final shaping. Um, this step is uh, the bench rest stage, and um, this usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Final shaping really depends on what kind of bread you are making, whether it be a baguette or ciabatta or sourdough. All those final shaping um, styles are different and require its own technique. Um, after they are shaped, they are either placed on a lightly dusted couche or uh, placed in a bread basket. And also, breads can be dampened and rolled in seeds for flavor or to just make it pretty, um, just like we did for the semolina bread. After the shaping, the bread is finally ready to go into the final stages of baking, which includes um, the final proof. Uh, during this time, the dough must relax and continue to ferment, and you will be able to tell that the dough will increase in volume. Um, the dough should be placed in a spray down covered rack to maintain a nice humid environment for the dough and it will help prevent the loaves from drying out. But a proofer and um, the retarding process can also work nicely too. And the retarding process is the process of slowing down the fermentation process by putting it into a cool environment, um, usually a refrigerator. Um, but the final proofing can take anywhere from 45 minutes to several hours, or even overnight if the dough is being retarded. After the final proof, it is finally time to start loading your breads into the oven to begin baking your bread. Um, in class, we load our breads on deck oven loaders, which makes it so much easier to make sure your bread goes in evenly in the oven. But when you are putting your dough on the loaders, it is important to make sure that they are evenly um, spaced apart because if they're too close together, that will mess up the, um, the baking process and will create a pale crust on your bread, which you never want. Um, once your dough is on the oven loaders, it is time to start scoring your bread. And uh, depending on what type of bread you are making, um, each dough is scored differently and has its own traditional pattern of scoring. Uh, for a baguette, it is, um, each score is at a 45 degree angle and three inches in length and um, overlap one another to achieve that signature look of a baguette. Uh, scoring provides a spot for the loaf to burst, allowing the loaf to um, fully expand during the baking process and to create a more open crumb, but uh, scoring also just makes the bread look nicer and has a more professional look to it. Um, it is important to um, be loose when scoring and um, be gentle and to work in swift motions to avoid um, snagging the dough um, and creating like spikes and ridges on your scoring. 
um, uh, once your dough is in the oven, steam should be added uh, during the baking process to maintain a humid environment for the dough. Um, and so it can expand to its greatest volume. Steam um, gives the bread a beautiful shiny crust and allows your scoring to open up and form ears on your bread, which is always nice. Um, there are a few different ways to determine that your loaf is properly baked. Um, by the crust color and by the hollow sound you hear when you knock on the bottom of your loaf. The last and final step of the 10 steps of baking is the cooling and storage of your bread. Uh, now I know it's very tempting to eat hot bread right out of the oven, but um, that is not really the best way to um, really taste the subtle flavors. Um, when the bread first comes out of the oven, it is still filled with excess moisture and carbon dioxide, and the bread really needs time to cool so that the moisture and gas will dissipate. Uh, after the cooling, the texture and flavor and aroma of the bread um, will have developed into what they should be. And um, once the bread is immediately taken out of the oven, it needs to be placed on a wired rack in a single layer to um, allow air circulation. Um, Heath hearth breads um, should be uh, bagged in paper uh, to stay crispy. Enriched dough should be um, bagged in plastic and sweet dough should be um, wrapped in plastic and stored in pastry boxes. And that is the 10 steps of baking. Bye!